Rebecca, where have you been? We've been all of the looking well, for you. a few weeks ago, I fell down the stairs and I lost my unborn child. And, and then I went to a fat farm. Well, Rebecca, you've gained 20 pounds. Well, what do you expect? I was at a fat farm. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the pew. pew, the very loud pew here. Coming loud in, in the squat. There's wow. no air conditioning, no electricity, but plenty of voices. Plenty of and voices. And they're all shouting. The clamoring. Clamoring squatters. <laughs> <laughs> Hard to get them to be quiet, but now they are. Thank you. So, shout out to Cindy Seymour and her Fox Snowden. Yes, uh, the, and we're not biggest, talking about our biggest fan. Yes, Foxy, Foxy fan, and who's actually Fox? <laughs> yeah, so we have a a fan, a Foxy fan, oh, yeah. fan yeah. Fox. Yeah. So, um, are we going to show the picture? Yes, we just showed it. Oh, not to be confused with Eric Snowden. No, the the big mouth, the, the blabber mouth. And who actually? He's actually kind of cute. Who we, I thought was a fox, I, like a yeah. nerdy fox. Yeah. Oh yeah. He really reminded yeah. me of all the nerdy. Yeah. Uh, the nerdy guy, the the guys that we saw at the uh, affiliate summit. Yeah. Remember? Yeah. We went to this convention last weekend. Oh darn it! It was just full of all these really cute nerdy guys. And we got all these great <gasps> things too. Where? Where? Oh, just like at Marriott. It was mm -hmm. like a whole convention of smart nerdy guys. Yeah. Oh my god. Funny, and, funny smart. And nerdy. they were all just like incredibly fuckable. Yeah. And uh, we got all these great, uh, we got all those great uh, chachkas. None of which we will show you today. Yeah, because we forgot them at home. We, left, we didn't bring them to the you know, squat. When you're homeless, you them to the squat. when you're homeless and squatting, you just don't have time for tchotchkes. No, well, I don't know. We don't have, don't have time for much else. But unless, yeah. unless those tchotchkes are empty beer cans. Yeah, there's plenty of those right here. Yeah. Yes, there are plenty of them. Spit or swallow is the question of the day. Is it only the question of today? Is it the question of it's the question of today. It's the question of right now. Is is James Holmes, the guy, the Aurora movie theater shooter who killed all those people, is he a swallower or a spitter? And the reason we were asking that question is because he's just been sentenced to life in prison for killing all those people. And we were wondering, you know, whether he's going to be swallowing the cum or spitting it once he's having gay sex. I think he's going to be a swallower. Um, swallower. I don't, people, you know, people, if he can't defend himself and he's in prison, he's going to be a swallower. Yeah. Well, they're not going to put up with that bullshit. If you give him a gun and he'll defend himself. Yeah, but he's not going to have a gun. No, he won't. He'll have to. He'll have to swallow it. It depends gun. on how big his penis is. Yeah. Uh, they, you know what? They're not size queens in prison. They're they're whole they're whole queens. But you're in Peru. Yeah, yeah. it's no, that's not her. Michael the expert says they're he says expert. it now. They're they're whole they're whole queens, not right. size queens. Right. <laughs> so what kind of holes are they looking for? Any kind of hole. <laughs> as tight as possible, but it can be in your mouth, it can be your butt, it can be your ear if you if they can get it in there. So what if it's like you have this really loose asshole because you're a slut? Does that mean that you won't be popular in prison? No, it'll be it just means you, you'll be popular with another hole. Oh, what other hole? Well, besides your butt? Oh, the, your mouth. Yeah. Uh, okay, well, you know, if you've got a loose ass, then you probably have a loose mouth, too. Yeah, but a loose mouth, you can, cut, you can control that. <laughs> I suppose. It's a muscle. Teeth. You heard yeah, it here. Yeah. <laughs> Holes, not cocks. Yeah. <laughs> that sounded really good. <laughs> that <sounded> very appetizing. <laughs> The other thing that Michael pointed out that I had never noticed, probably because I never shop in these stores in our neighborhood, is that 7-Eleven controls all the delis and bodegas in our neighborhood. And they do it in a very surreptitious and way. Clandestine, yes. Clandestine. Clandestinely. They, what happens is, there are all, there's the NIMBY, they're not in my backyards in New York, and especially in Manhattan. Nobody wants a 7-Eleven. So I would love a 7-Eleven. Well, ah. we're not your typical New Yorkers. So most New Yorkers right. do not want 7-Eleven. So when 7-Eleven tried to come into Manhattan, they were they came, they came up upon all of this uh, all this backlash, and so um, they came in the back door now. So they didn't want to get the, the people in Manhattan don't want to get rid of the mom and pop. They think that 7-Eleven will will uh, take over all the mom and pops, and in fact that's what they did. 7-Eleven approached the mom and pops and um, said basically or, what? 7-Eleven <laughs> approached all the mom and pops and. Uh, just like, just like a Coke dealer. Yeah. 
So the Coke dealer right. comes and suggests that, hey, you know, we should have a little alliance here. You sell a little for me, right. and everybody will make big profits. And, so, and the only way you discovered this is because you use your debit card. Right, because the, the receipt And then you thought, I never shot that sound and, and Ernie said, Ernie made a good point. He said, well, how come they don't have Slurpees? And I, I, they don't have Slurpees because a Slurpee would be very obvious. You go to a, a deli and it would be very obvious that uh, that it's a 7-Eleven if you get a Slurpee. So if we're shot. using that Coke dealer analogy and the favorite, <laughs> the, the favorite thing about 7-Eleven is Slurpees. So like the favorite thing for a Coke dealer would be Coke. Does that mean that Coke dealer wouldn't have well, Coke no. that's under that? If, if 7-Eleven only sold Slurpees, that would be, that would be a good analogy, but um, but you know all the things that I associate with 7-Eleven are not sold in those. Bodegas. Well, what else do you? Associate? Well, like those hot dogs that you know are of, oh, of dubious story. age that are always sitting on the little hot rollers. Well, maybe that's spinning round and round. Those, those and visual right. things that you would associate with them, but I mean, I'm sure 7-Eleven would associate, you know, and those. Uh, and what about and, those and, microwavable and, burritos? Uh, you know, 7-Eleven classics. I think they're all over the place. Uh, you cannot get a microwavable burrito at the bodega, can you? I'm, I don't know. Let's ask, ask Earl. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> and now a word from our sponsor. Welcome back to the Pew. Welcome back to the pew. Welcome back to the pew. Well, we reestablished order in the square. Well, we try. We just, Silence. We assemblies of order. And yeah, I knew it was Silence is golden. Yeah. And rent free. So, now, but <laughs> our special, shout out. Yes. our special pew for trooper so shout out to about time, which sounds in like Austin, Texas. Yes, and it sounds like that's a place for uh, for uh, boxers and oh my evening, but it's actually a dance club in Austin, Texas. Yes, it's a dance club that has so generously aired the pew to their customers, possibly sending them. They know. They know where the money is. They know. They know what the people want. Well, if they know where the money is, why don't they tell us where the money is? Well, because it's not here in this spot. <gasps> Dog was hooked on the Genesis pew orange bag. <laughs> that's that's, that, that's a, a good way to get Genesis on the show, we've right? We've got a poopy dog <laughs> on the pew. <laughs> <laughs> poopy le pew. So thank you about time. Hope to see you soon sometime visiting your club. Now, what do those bitches want to know? Uh, Felicia Gaffney asked what, where the glam and Ernie Glam came from. So well, well, where did it come from? I just made it up. I made oh. it up. I was a big fan of glam rock in the 70s when I was a kid. And I loved uh, David Bowie and Alice Cooper and Sweet. So... I wanted to be glam, and by the time I grew up, it, you know, glam was over. You so, grew up. but I figured I would just keep the name, and I gave it to myself. And by the time I moved to New York, I was going by that name. So it's like a form of masturbation. Uh, masturbation? Yes. One of the fun you gave it to yourself. <laughs> right. <laughs> Surname masturbation. Masturbation. See you next time. Bye.